Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hello fellow mathematicians. Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches. And today we're going to be working on the end of the year fifth grade number sense video number two. This is your basis for all the other mathematics that we're going to be working on in this end of year series here. Let's go forward. Here's a recap of what you need to know at the end of fifth grade. Number sense, and there's all those pieces, and we're going to be working on that addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponents today. Algebra and functions, measurement and geometry, and some statistics. By the end of grade five, students increase their math fluency with the four basic arithmetic operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, applied to fractions, decimals, and positive and negative numbers. They know and use common measuring units to determine length and area, and know and use formulas to determine the volume of simple geometric figures. Students know the concept of angle measurement and how to use a protractor and compass to solve problems. They use grids, tables, graphs, and charts to record and analyze data. Under the number sense, today we're going to be working with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and exponents. Addition. In math, is finding the total or sum by combining two or more numbers or things. We can look here. Here's the, the academic language that we have for addition. We have the add-in and the add-end and then the sum. And this is where we start working on it. It's going to be add the ones, add the tens, and then add the hundreds. Notice how I'm keeping all of my ones in that column. That's my place value column for ones, my place value column for tens, and my place value columns for 100s. And if I if it adds up to more than the hundreds column, it's even the thousands, I would have it over here. I would have another column here. Let's look at some common problems that will possibly be on an end of year exam. So here we have some decimals. And remember, this is part of uh, that addition, that applying your addition skills. So 8.1 plus 0 0.54 plus 7. You might be thinking, oh no, that's going to be difficult. Well, if we just look over here, we can just put down, a, I'm going to put down a decimal point. And if I notice, I'm not going to be um, adding anything to the, the tens column because it's zero, but there's a tens column here. So I could just write that out. One, five, four. Okay, that's, that's 154 thousandths. I have a plus seven and then a plus eight here. So that's going to be 15 and 154 thousandths. That's my answer that's going to go right there. Very simple. You can also add it up like this. 8.1. And then I have that 0 0.054. And then 7. And I could put in there that 0. But you notice 4, 5, 1, 15. Easy. Okay, let's move on to 1B here. So it's negative 4 plus a negative 3. Well, let's just cross that out. Minus 4, minus 3. That's equal to minus 7. Now here we have something a little bit different where it's minus 3 plus 7. That is also equal to 7 minus 3, which is equal to 4. In D, when we're adding up fractions, we need to add by the same denominator. Notice here 4 and 8. Well, the common denominator between these two here is going to be 8 because uh, I can't reduce the top any further that numerator here in the 3 8 So what I would do is I would rewrite it as 2. I'm going to multiply each the top and bottom here by 2. So it'll be 2 over 8 plus 3 8 plus 5. And that is going to give me 5 8 plus 5, which we can write in the common way of 5 5 8 and that's in its simplest form because I know I cannot reduce this fraction any further. That 5 cannot go into the 8. Let's look at E here. So I have 22 sevenths plus 7 20 seconds. Hmm. So I have an improper fraction here, a regular fraction here, proper fraction here. Now I could go through and go, well, wait a minute, what, what do I need to do? What's the least common denominator? Well, uh, I would say just go ahead and just multiply that 7 times 22. So 22 times 7. It's going to be, I'll multiply that. 7 times 2 is 14. 7 times 2 is 14, 15, 154. Okay. And uh, now I have to 
I could multiply that 22 into that 7, but I don't need to because I know that this goes in 7 times 3 is going to give me 21. So I can write that as 3 and 1 7th plus 7 20 seconds. And I know that 7 times 22 is equal to 154 because I did that here. So I'm going to go say, hey, wait a minute. I need to multiply this right here by 22 top and bottom. So that's equal to 3 and 22 because that's just 1 times it times 22 times 100 or under over 154 plus plus now I did that 22 times 7 so it's going to be 7 times 7 so that's going to be 49 154 now I just add the top here so if I round that up to 50 plus 22 it's going to be 72 minus 1 it's going to be 71 71 154 but wait I have this 3 here so I have to put that 3 up front so there's my final answer 3 71 154 subtraction in math is to take away from a group or a number of things when we subtract the number of things the group reduces or becomes less and the result is the difference here we have the academic language you need to understand we have the minuend the subtrahend and that's going to be right here where you know where you say what you're subtracting or taking away and this is the difference when you do that subtraction Again, here first we subtract the ones, the tens, and the hundreds. Notice how I'm keeping my place values all in line. What that does is it helps reduce confusion when you start doing the math. Let's look at some common subtraction problems you may find in an end of year exam. First is 18 minus 0 0.342, and you're like, wait, wait a minute, this number here, and this is a fraction of a number. It's like, well, what do we do? Well, there's many different ways to set it up. So let's set it up like this. So 18.000. I added the same number of zeros as there are numbers in this decimal. And I have 0 0.342. And I put my subtraction symbol there. Same thing with like subtracting other numbers. I just borrow some uh, tenths from the ones column here. So that's going to be back to 7. And I have 10 here, but that's now it's 9. I'm just going to put down 9 here because I'm going to borrow it over here for this 10. So 10 one thousandths minus 2 one thousandths is 8 one thousandths. 9 hundredths minus 4 hundredths is going to give me 5 hundredths. 9 tenths minus 3 tenths is 6 tenths. I just bring that, see how I'm keeping it all in the columns? I, so I can just bring that decimal point down here. And this is just going to be 17. And that's my final answer right here. Now, if there were units associated with it, I would include the units in my answer. Tracting 4 minus 33, I just add them up because, and they have a negative symbol in front of it, so I know it's going to be negative. And 33 plus 4 is 37. Now, this one is a little bit different. And I'm going, well, wait a minute. We did this, but it had a plus there last time. Well, we just made it so it was minus 3 minus 7. Well, when you have a minus, if you look at this, we can say this is a minus 1 times this. So that's going to give me minus 3 plus 7 is equal to 4. See what I did there? So you don't have to put the, that 1 in there every time, but I'm, this is to illustrate what you need to do to your thinking. So minus 1 times this. So a negative times a negative is equal to a positive. Now we have fractions here. So 5 ninths minus 2 thirds. Well, I noticed that we have a difference in our denominators, we need to make sure that they have the same denominators before we start subtracting. And that 3 is a factor of 9, so what do I need to do? I just multiply the top and bottom by 3, because 3 times 3 in the denominator is 9. So I can just write this out, 5 ninths minus 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, and that's going to equal to, since this fraction is larger than this fraction, it's going to be a negative minus, and six, or 5 ninths minus 6 ninths is going to be a negative 1 ninth. Now I have a whole number minus a fraction. So same thing, I need to, I can pull out one of these, I, or I can make this into a fraction uh, by multiplying by 5 at the top and bottom, because this is considered 3 over 1. Uh, let's just do that. Let's just do it the simple way. So uh, let's do 5 times 3 and 5 times 1. Okay, so 5 times 3 is 15, and 5 times 1 is 5, 
minus 4 fifths, and that is equal to 11 fifths. Now this is an improper fraction. Many times they'll ask you to simplify, so I would have to have this as, I know that 2 times 5 is 10, so I can say this is 2 and 1 fifth. Another strategy would have been to just say 2 here and have 5 fifths, because I know that 5 fifths is larger than that 4 fifths. But I wanted to show you the longer way. Let's take a look at multiplication. Multiplication math is finding the result of combining groups of equal sizes. Here we have you know, the basic concepts in our academic language for this. So 9 is equal to the multiplicand, and that's a, a factor. And here's a multiplier. That's what I'm multiplying that 9 by, and that is a factor. And then our product is the answer. Notice how I'm keeping my ones, tens, hundreds, and then over here, this is a thousands. So it has multiple steps here on what I need to do because I am multiplying a three-digit number by a two-digit number. Notice how I did the two-digit number going through for each one of these numbers up here. I'm sorry, this number two here, multiplying through. And then I had to go through and repeat the process. But when I do it here, I'm starting out in a 10 position. That's why I put this zero here because this is actually 30 times 4, which is, and we put down 1 and a 2, but it's actually 120, so I have to put that 0 here. So there's that. that's why I have that 2 right here, so I can multiply that and then add it to there. See how that's why I'm putting these numbers up? I'm going through. I've already come up with my answer down here by adding up these two rows of numbers. Here's some multiplication problems. For the end of year test, you're probably going to come up with something that's where you're going to multiply some decimals, fractions, and a word problem. So let's take a look at the first one. Let's tackle this first one. So it's 3.2 times 0 0.05. 3.2. And I'm going to add on another 0 here. And then I have 0 0.05. And I'm multiplying. Now it's like any multiplication problem, it's just that I have these decimal places here. So let's look at this. So 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 2, and I'm going to say 10. And again, it's 5 hundredths times 2 tenths. So but I'm just making it simplified here. That's 10. 5 times 3 is 15. Let's make that 16. So I'm going to put that here and my 1 over here so it's in its own column. And then the rest are zeros. When I say that's zeros, it's, I don't need to write anything more. What I need to do is count up these decimal places. So I have one, two, three, four. So one, so I go one, two, three, four. I always put a zero on this side to make sure you can recognize that. And that is my answer here. So here, when I multiply fractions, fractions are easy to multiply because I just multiply the tops and the bottoms. And so all I need to do is just draw this here. Three times eight, what is that? That's 24. And four times nine is 36. Now, I can take this down, so what I can do is I can divide each side by 4. So 4, I'm just going to do that at divide, divide 4. Let's see what I, if I can get, make that easy. So that's going to be 6, and that's going to be 9. Ooh, I can go even further, divide by 3, and that's going to give me 2 thirds. Now, I could have, I know that 24 is divisible by 12, and 36 is divisible by 12. But if you're not sure, you could have been doing it by twos, and then two, 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 and you'd eventually get to three. But I wanted to show you that there's different ways to do this in your own method, in your own time to visualize this. Okay, let's take a look at the problem C here. So there are 20 bottles in a box. Each bottle weighs one and three-fourths pounds. How many pounds do all the bottles weigh together? So that's going to be 20 times one and three-fourths. Okay, now what does that equal? What I can do is go, well, wait a minute. I know that I can say this is going to be uh, 20 times 1 plus 20 times 3 fourths. All right, well, wait a minute. So I'm distributing across. Well, just watch what I'm doing here. So that's going to be 20. And then if I look at this here, I know that this is 20 times 1. I can go across there and I can say this is 60 divided by 4 plus 60 divided by 4. And that is equal to 20 plus this here. So what is this simplified? Well, I know that 15 plus 15 is 30. So four of them of those 15s is equal to 60. So I can just cross this out and just say that's 15. That's going to be 35 
And my final answer is going to be 35. I'm going to use the symbol pounds. 35 pounds. What did I do here? Now, again, let's just look at this different way. Is I could write it out as 20 over 1 times. And let's say this is 7 fourths because 4 over 4 is equal to 1. So I'm going to say times 7 fourths. And if you remember that when I multiply, I'm go going across and I'll create this improper fraction and it'll be over 4. But I know that 4 can go into 25 times. 5 times 7 is equal to 35. So there you are. There, there's multiple ways to look at this problem and come up with the answer. I want you to find the easiest way for you. Let's continue. So multiplication, write the answers. So 496 times 5.5. 496. Point zero times 5.5. So again, I did that. I added that zero there because I have a another decimal point, and that's going to help me determining where to place that decimal point. So 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 6 is 30. So I put my 3 up there and a 0 down here. 5 times 9 is 45 plus 3 is 48. A 4 up here. And 5 times 4 is 20 and then 24. Again, notice how I'm lining up all of my columns. Now, since I'm starting over here from this position, I put a 0 here. And then I just write down the same numbers because it's already been multiplied for me. 0, 0, 8, 4, and 2. Add them up. 0, 0, 8. 4 and 8 is 12. Put that up there. 4 and 2 is 6, 7. Now, how many decimal places do I come over? 1, 2. 1, 2. So there's my number, 2,228. That's what I put up here, 2,228. Let's take a look at this, 242 times 537. 537 times 242. Put it there, just in case. So 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times 3 is 6, 7. 2 times 5 is 10. And that's actually 2 times 500. That's why it's 1,000 there, in the 1,000 spot. Since I'm starting here from this position here, which is actually 40, I put a 0 here. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 3 is 12, 13, 14. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21. And now, again, I'm going to go and put two zeros here. I've already done the math for the 2s, right? So I know it's going to be 4, 7, 0, 1. That adds up to 4. That's 5, because it's 15. I went over here, 8, 9. There's another 9, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 129,954 is my final answer. That goes right there. Now we're into division. So division in math is splitting or reducing a large group of number into uh, equal smaller groups, or it's an operation that divides a number into portions. We have multiplication where we're multiplying it. Now we're dividing it back into those groups. We're looking at this here. It's going to be 654 divided by 20. Right here, I know that I can't divide 6 or by 20, so I have to put a placeholder here, which is 0, and then come up here and say, well, there's 3 can go into there. I have 60, 54. Come over here, and I know that, so I have 54. I can't go over, so it can't be another 3, so 2 times 20 is 40. And then I get 140 because I not recognize I did not want to have a remainder, but I know that 20 goes into 147 times. And notice how I move that decimal point up there. So we can have that, or we can have 32 with a remainder of 140. So for division, it says write the answer. So 20 divided by 0 0.05. Now I could do the long division way, where it would be this here, be 20 divided by 0.05. Or I could do it the other way. I mean, this way, it would, I'll, all I do is just go 1, 2, so it would just be 5. I would add two zeros here. That 2, 2 cannot be divided by 5, but 20 can, so I would say 5 times 4 is 20, and then it'd be 0, 0, so it would be 400 up here, right? Or I can verify that, so it'd be 20 over 1 divided by, and now I'm going to change this into a fraction, so instead of being five hundredths like that, it would just be five over one hundred. And when we're dividing fractions, we just switch and flip twenty over one, switch that from division to multiplication times, and I flip it, so one hundred over five 
I can multiply this out and come up with 2,000 over 5 and then reduce it from there, but I can recognize that 5 goes into 24 times, and that equals 400. You can use different methods to validate and verify your answer, so this is just going to be 400. So this is a large number divided by another, well, it's a two-digit number, but it's still kind of large, so let's set it up. So 32, 694, divided by 45. I know that 3 can't be divided by it, 32 cannot be divided by it, 6, or 326 can be, so I have 45. And to estimate on what my answer is, where I can start from, so I'm going to say that I'm going to round up to 50. So 50 and 50 make 100. I have 300s here, so that'd be 600. 45 times 6 is going to be close, but I have, I'm, I think that maybe if I start by 7 times 45, so I'm going to come over here and do 7 times 45, or 45 times 7, and that's 35. 4 times 7 is 28, 29, 30, 31, so 315, I guessed right. That was through my estimation, so I put a 7 here, 315. I subtract that, so 6 minus 5 is 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, and that's going to be a 0. Don't need to do that. Bring down that 9, so I have 119. I know that 45 and 45 make 90. If I add, add another 45, that's going to be 135, which is too much, so it's going to be 70. It's going to be a 2 there. I'm going to put down 90, subtract again. 9 minus 0 is 9. 11 minus 9 is going to be 2. So that's 29, 294. So I know that 6 times 50 is going to be 300, but I have 45, so I probably could be safe to go with 6 times that. So all I need to do is look over here. Rather than remultiplying it, I could. All I do is just subtract 45 from here, so minus 45. And again, that's 0. I can look at that as 11 minus 4 is going to be 7. And that's 270. So I say, well, okay, well, that's 6 here, 270. So 4 minus 0 is 4. 9 minus 7 is 2. And that's going to be it. It's going to be 726. Remainder 24. That's where I can start from. We can just go forward from there for other things. But let's take a look at that. You know, we can validate it different ways. But I just want to leave it with that remainder because... I mean, I could keep on going out and, and figuring it out, but that's as far as I need to go. Unless your teacher says, I want you to have a decimal point out to you know, three decimal places or two decimal places. You have to keep going with the remainder then. Let's look at this one here. 504 divided by 2.1. Not 21, 2.1. However, we can write that out as 504. Instead of saying 2.1, I like making it so that it's easier to work with. So I'm going to move that decimal point over there, say 21. And when I do that, so it's like multiplying this by 10, I have to multiply this by 10 as well. So I have to add a zero here. So 21 goes into 50 two times, and that's going to be 42. There's 84. And wait, look at that. So 84 is divisible by 21 four times, because four times one is four. 4 times 2 is 8, so look at this, this is going rad, so I'm going to do 224, that's 84, and then I subtract that, and that's going to give me 0, so 0 times 2, 21 is 240, so that's going to give me 240, easy peasy, it's the math, I'm keeping my columns straight here as possible, so I can make sure that I'm subtracting and doing the multiplications correctly and, and figuring out the answers. Keep it neat. An exponent in math is a number that is placed as a superscript over a number. This indicates that the base is raised to a certain power, or in other words, an exponent. Tells how many times its base is used as a factor. Exponents are used to write repeated multiplication of the base. By the end of fifth grade, you need to understand what exponents are and how to use them. Here we see the number five, that is the base and it's raised to a power or its exponent is 4. So 5 to the 4th is repeated multiplication of the number 5. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, and that's 4 times. And that's going to be 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125, times 5 is 625. Here are some problems you may encounter when you're going through your end of year 5th grade math test. 
So here we go. It says exponents. Write these numbers as the products of their prime factors using exponents to show multiples of a factor if needed. Well, that's interesting. So if we look at this, it says prime factors. That's a, that's a key thing here. We have to get it down to prime numbers. And one way to do that is do a factor tree. So I'm going to say 48. Okay. And the simplest start with is 2. That's going to be 24. I can do that by 2 again. So 2 times 12 is 24. This is almost like a, a you know number breaking it down into number bonds and such. So I can do that by 2 again. So there's 2. And that gives me 6. And 2 again. 2 and 3. So I would say 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 to the 4th times 3. And if we look at it, it's 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, 3 times 16 is 48. Double check, 3 times 6 is, there we go, there's 18, 3, 1, 48. Double check your answers, easy way to do it. 36, prime factors again. I think this is going to go a little bit more quickly. So 36, all I do is just go, okay, well, wait a minute, this is 2. 2 times what is equal to 36? Well, it's going to go in there 1 and 8 times, so it's 18. Same thing here, 2 goes into 18 nine times and then wait a minute so three times three so this is going to be two squared times three squared because four times nine is 36 boom now solve this problem five cubed times ten squared well we can't just straight out multiply it across and add the uh, exponents because the base is not the same what can we do since it's only a cube and a square I, what i would recommend is go five five times 5 and we know that 10 squared is 10 because 10 times 10 is 100 so this is the part that you, all you have to do is figure out this part and add two zeros to the end so what's 5 times 5 that's 25 5 times that well 4 we know that 4 25 because 4 quarters to a dollar is 100 so add another 25 so that's gonna be 125 times 100 here we go and so my answer is going to one two five zero zero and there it is twelve thousand five hundred thank you for your time and please remember to like share and subscribe to mr woods teaches and remember to be a math person all you have to be is a person that does math